round of applause. What's up, y'all? Yeah, I told my boy I was going to do this, man. Y'all got to participate with me. Marco. Steven. Solo. You got to say Sean. I like to keep this face this way so I can remember who the hell I am. I'm <laughs> hey, well, what's up, y'all? Uh, Steve is quiet over here. Steve <laughs> being shy. We have the name tags up here so you'll know who you are. That's what I need. Mean. I gotta know who I am. How's everybody doing out there? How many people we have out here? About five? So what's up, man? Let's get right into something, man. I know somebody up here got a question. Let's just get right into having some fun, man. Do we have a microphone in the audience? There is. I see one over there, but I would imagine we're in a small room. And if you probably just talk like this, <laughs> we could probably won't be able to see you because we're blinded. We are blinded. We are blinded. My man, right here. Stand up. What's your name? Huh? Peyton. That's Peyton. Peyton. That's Peyton. Peyton was at our table. We were doing the we were doing a little flossing, weren't we? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Come, on. Come, here. Come, here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on, hustle up here. Hustle up here. And Peyton. 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 Jump up here. Peyton. Next time say Peyton. Not Peyton. All right. Here we go. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know I can do this. I've been practicing. Okay. Wait. I <laughs> that whole thing, Peyton, that's from. That's, hey, I hope y'all can with this. Very good. That's all from a video game, correct? That the, the dance yeah. thing that it was? Yeah, get out of here. I don't know. The kids are doing that. <laughs> all right, so what's your question? Peyton did have a What's question, your question, right? Peyton? Which one? Steven? Favorite mission that we did? Uh, mine, I always think, is the big one. The big one. The big, the big one. one. The big, big one. one. The big one. The big one. I think we all are uh, good on that answer right there, right? Was the big one the, because we talked before when we all had to wear those. No, the that was, uh, that's that was the Plato part. Okay, so whatever that, that was my favorite. Well, I wasn't in that one, so. Oh, you weren't? <laughs> no, you guys made oh. me stay in the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, then I'll say the big one. The one that we all did together. It's because you had the driving mod. You still made me stay in the car. <laughs> so, like, it's been eight, well, I mean, I know this week was the fifth year anniversary of this game, and yeah. we shot it three and a half years before that, so it was like eight years ago. Five years, man, and it still feel like it's, like, you know, last week or maybe a couple months ago, but, you know, fans are still out here making it feel like it's new, so. Well, it, it is new to a lot of them, though, because that's what's kind of cool, is that we get a new influx of fans all the time, every year. Every year, it seems like some mom or some dad or both finally go, all right, Jesus, leave me alone. You can get the freaking game. That's true. I guess as the kids get older, too, right? Is it on sale yet? <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Let's have fun, man. Come on, y'all. Back there, way back there. Stand up. 
Sit down. I don't even, I mean, I'm, I would assume they're making one. I mean, they seem to be, what, every seven years these come out? Yeah, somewhere. But actors are the last to know anything regarding that stuff. Hey, I noticed, I noticed one thing real quick, is there is a mic right there. <laughs> there is. But we, we can hear it. Yeah, but as far as, as that goes to nobody else wasted any question, their question on GTA 6? Or, or DLC. Or DLC. Only believe what you see. I tell people this all the time. Believe what you see, not what you hear. Anything else is bullshit. Rockstar is very, very, very close to the chest. They're very private. They're not going to let you know anything. And all these bloggers that are out there going, it's going to be in Tokyo. <laughs> you know nothing. Okay? So, next question. Hi, this is a question about Walking Dead. Um, for the two who weren't part of Walking Dead, how would your characters in Grand Theft Auto um, survive in with like a zombie universe? How would we survive in the zombie universe? Of Michael and Franklin? Yeah, and the Walking Dead. Those and you know what? Trevor too. But well, I know I wouldn't survive because the black guy always gets <laughs> <in> the first. <laughs> they tired of me and my black jokes, but it's true. <laughs> I, I can tell you that, that if you want to know how Michael survived, just wait for the DLC. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm trolling. I always troll. Michael would survive with intelligence. No, I don't know. I don't think Trevor. I always say I don't think Trevor would do too well in that world. No, Trevor would be too impulsive. You gotta be smart. He'd be somewhere. chained to a fence. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trevor would do well. No, he's too impulsive. You know, he's, you gotta have you gotta have some the intelligence in that world in order to survive. Because he would just be on his own. And I don't think it would work. All right, anyone under twenty-one, cover your ears, please. Okay, because Trevor would, Trevor would have a ton of fun in that zombie universe, trust me. Right? We all know it for a fact. The little hot zombie that lives down the street, you know, come walking in. <laughs> Trevor would go, oh, 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 baby, let me have some of that. Some smell no, that's true. So, let's, be, let's be real over here trying to be, like, oh, Trevor would be married. Now, he would score big time. Next. You gotta take your mask off, or I'm gonna shoot your ass. <laughs> you first! <laughs> so, how do you get into the voice acting career, and is there any job opportunities for that? Can you say that again? Just how do we get into the, like the game, basically? I mean, the, the, I'm not asking for a tutorial or anything. Video, video games are... How do you get into the... Do you want me to answer the fucking question or do you want to keep talking? <laughs> Ask your question and shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck to up. Get, to get into the video games is just like... Oh, don't, don't get me started with Donna. So, anyways. <laughs> Next. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. so here's, here's ask your fucking you. question and shut up, is what we said. So do you want us to answer your question or not? Yes. Okay, then shut up so we can answer it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yes or no? Do you want us to answer it or not? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it was it was an audition of video games. I mean, the video games, there's so many video games out there nowadays, so it's just for actors. It's, you know, an opportunity to, to, to work and to, uh, in, in a different medium. Because it, it was definitely different for us. Yeah, All and, of the, us. and the first thing you understand is that Sorry. it wasn't voiceover. It was everything. It, it, this, we're not voice actors. This guy right here, you don't just hear his voice on The Walking Dead or Westworld or anything. He's a fucking actor. He's an actor. And that's what you do. You want to be a voice actor? Learn how to act. Go to acting school. Take classes, study, and never stop studying. Because if you ever stop studying, you're not learning, and you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to get to where you want to get. It's real simple. It's real There's simple. certainly lots of, you know, opportunities in that, in that motion capture world for that. And learn how to move too. By the way, that's another thing. Learn how to move. Take hot jazz three days a week. Next question. Zumba. Thanks, man. Well, this question is for Franklin, my man. 
Which Sean? in the game is your favorite, most most favorite car? Uh, uh, is it your Buffalo or was it your bike or the Buffalo? Yes. Everybody agree with that? Yes. The oh, Buffalo, boy. right? <laughs> can somebody? Can you tell me why the Buffalo is your favorite? It is a well, it's a, it's a 1930. Uh, so what is my best ability <laughs> with the Buffalo? Your driving ability, of course, and your drive-by. And the slow motion. The slow motion, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a 2013 Charger, which I modified in your HUD colors. It's all metallic, and I had a body. I turned it into a race car, because it deserves to be a race car. Do yeah. different cars have different abilities? I know that sounds stupid, but no, the depends. slow motion thing is just the character. I guess it all depends. Uh, yeah. yeah, your little mini doesn't really do what the Buffalo does. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm still yeah. learning about the game. But you also drives that in real life, so there you go. Nice! <laughs> and also, Trevor, I also modified your truck to look more like a monster truck General Lee. Michael, your your, your HUD colors, and it looks beautiful. It's a, it, it looks like a, like a true car. The, like way, the way you like it. I like it. I love it, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. I love it. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Luke, what do you have to say for yourself here? Luke! I was just wondering what if, what was the most challenging part about bringing the GTA 5 script to life? <laughs> it wasn't that challenging, to be honest with you. It was such a good script. It's like you just took it, look at it, and run with it. And, and the characters were certainly all built into the words on the script. I think yes. the toughest part was probably the toughest, I guess, being the technical aspect of motion capture because with motion capture you're in the suit with the balls and we were all wearing helmets with a camera and yeah, a light camera. like this kind of bright in your eyes so getting used to that and getting used to a lot of oh sorry like, oh, banging into each other and you can't just grab someone because you cover a marker so the technical aspects i think for me were the most challenging because there were things you wanted to do even if you were getting in someone's face you had to Inside do this otherwise we would be <laughs> yeah you'd bang into, into each, each other, other with our face fast and they're expensive little cameras so they did not like it when we were like <laughs> yeah and, and, and then the other thing too is because you've got balls all over you i mean those balls i mean they my balls hurt all the time. <laughs> I would do a thing of roll. A lot of of the balls. It. Yeah, it would, you know, jam into you and kind of, that's painful. Thank you. Thank Who you is you that know. dirty old man up on the stage? I can't believe I brought my son here. That's all guys. <laughs> so, um, uh, your, uh, your character, uh, Ned, is a uh, big movie fan in the, uh, in, in the game. Uh, do you guys, uh, you guys have a favorite film, and also, was there a character that you kind of tried to channel when you were doing your characters in GTA? A character, sure. a char a different character? Yeah, like or some or something. Like you mean like, like some, De Niro? Some, yeah, some, yeah, some sort no, of. No, fuck Robert De Niro. That guy can't carry my job. <laughs> like an inspiration or someone that we were trying to sort of our characters would emulate favorite movie. All right, Sean, you go. Favorite movie, and were you was your character Franklin based on roughly? On anyone, right? Is yes, that that's exactly it. Yes. Uh, well, my, I feel that like with my character, it was pretty much, you know, it hit home with me. So I really didn't have like a movie that Franklin was playing part two, except it could have been like Boys in the Hood or some hood type of movie because that's who Franklin was. So it was easy for me to fall into that because I was familiar with that kind of environment. You know, me coming from the hood, so it was kind of easy for me to get into it. As far as learning the script, I had to work on that part. How to read the script, how to act, and perform it. And I say this all the time, these two dudes, they helped me to learn to perform, to be frank. And I think I did pretty good. Damn, Damn good job. Do you have a favorite movie? I don't know if we've ever discussed it. Oh. Um, the one that you want to Yeah. Are you too embarrassed to say it? It's kind yeah, it's probably it's kind of X-rated. <laughs> oh, one of those booty films. <laughs> big, big For me, no, I, I don't, I don't really have. I didn't really follow some character or anything. I kind of just went with whatever came to me, you know, and everything. And, and as far as favorite movies, I doubt if anybody knows my favorite movie. It's a movie called Scarecrow. It starred Gene Hackman and Al Pacino. It's a road movie oh, from 1972. It's a freaking great movie if you want some good acting. 
But uh, that, for me, Michael was easy to relate to because, you know, he was coming out of retirement. I kind of came out of retirement for it because I kind of quit acting for four years. And, uh, you know, this was my first audition back. So it was, you know, it was great. But, but the, the being pulled back into it was all I needed to get to the character. And then I just let my imagination go. I mean, just, you know, you are, you are. Do everything that you can't do in real life. Boom, you got a character, you know? Yeah. That's kind of how I felt about it. Uh, so he did everything that he could do in real life. <laughs> favorite movie with his My Name is Joe. Uh, no one sees. That's pretty yeah. sick. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a great Scottish film with Peter Mullen, who's a, my, probably my favorite actor. Um, and then uh, as far as the one character that I did sort of not want to emulate, but base upon Trevor was uh, Tom Hardy did a film called Bronze and early on, which yeah. Yeah. I hated the film. I liked the filmmaker and it glorified a really piece of shit human being. Bronson is, is a terrible human being and I think they glorified him, which I don't like. But his performance in Bronson as this man was had a very um, theatrical performance to it. He was larger than life, and, and the film itself made him larger than life. So I kind of wanted to do a North American version of Bronson. Right on. A really piece of shit who was kind of theatrical. Nailed it. So. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. So my question is, out of the three of you, who is your favorite character, why, and you can't pick yourself? Hey, that's good. This is a good question. The first kid, the first one ever asked that question. I have to pick. Um, do it have to be us three? Yes. Or, any, or anyone or in the game? Anybody in the game? You three. Well, I would have to. I would have to. I would have to pick uh, Shrimp because he was just like it wasn't no cutoff. It wasn't no like. He was just, whatever he wanted to do, however he wanted to do, it was just wild, crazy. He was way out somewhere else that I never heard of. And he just brought the madness to the game. But if I had, if you would give me, a, I could pick someone else in the game, I would have to pick Lamar. You know, so that's my pick. I would pick, uh, I would probably actually do Franklin because, you know, he came to us from the hood, but he was very naive in what was going on, and he was getting his eyes open, and it's kind of fun to think about going back to being like Franklin's age at the time, which would have been in his 20s, and getting my eyes open again because of everything that you could discover. But again, just like him, if I could pick anybody, I just want to be Chop, because, you know, <laughs> I'd just stop and drop wherever Chops, I want. Chop's Chop's owner. Chop's a stud, Three. too, man. He was pulling those. Yeah. Chop was an actual dog that they brought and they motion captured. The yeah. dog had to wear the same suit as us <laughs> for motion captures. For real. Yeah, they had, but they, then we replaced Chop because Chop was having a bit of a problem one day. He was mean, he was mean. So it's like, don't want to be working with a mean dog. I would say Franklin for me, just because it would be such a different experience. Oh, good question. Thank you. Hello. 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 I have a question. Where is Chop tonight? Where is Chop tonight? Yeah, did he get too fat? <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's jacking up with some bitch. <laughs> Next. That's it. All right. Thank you. What's up, dude? Okay. Hi. Uh, first of all, T, you are my favorite character. Who? Uh, Steve, you are my favorite. GTA, um, this guy? Yeah. <laughs> question Alright, uh, next question. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you guys were able to play any character in any form of media, regardless of time or who would it be? Who would it be? Yeah, sorry. Any, any character, would play any character in any movie? In any form of media, regardless of any time. Who would just be like any, any character yeah, in, in the world of entertainment? Yeah, I don't know. I always idol um, Denzel Washington, so any movie he, like Man on Fire, that was like one of my best movies. Yeah. So, yeah. I would actually, I'd probably play, uh, 
Again, you guys won't know it, but I, I maybe you do, but I would play probably the Gene Hackman character for Scarecrow. Man, you are T Bucket. Oh, dude. Gene, <laughs> Gene, 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 Gene Hackman's from my hometown, first of all. Okay. Brilliant he's, actor. He's, he's, he's a brilliant actor. He played football with my dad and all that kind of stuff. So I, I know Gene Hackman from way back. And that's that's who I would play. I would play that character because it was a freaking great character, Max. From uh, he, in fact everybody should go find Scarecrow and watch it. I don't know. I think certainly today I would have to say Forrest Gump just because I want some simplicity in my head and think, uh, to just have that life of enjoying for what is in front of you and not knowing anything behind and in front. I could I could use some of that right now. So I would say Forrest Gump. Simple, stupid, please. That's what I want. Life is like a box of bullshit. Or bad. <laughs> Hey, then you are, what's up? Um, Come on, just relax, ask away. Um, what is your favorite GTA 5 game? I mean, GTA game. Uh, uh, San Andreas. Yes! And then GTA 5. Can I get a yes? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite? Steve? What's your favorite GTA game oh, that you played? You know, all of them. <laughs> I can never decide. It's so hard to pick for you. It is. I'm always playing each of them so much. I just, I'm never able to really pin one down. That's inside. For anyone who doesn't know, Stephen, he doesn't even play in our game, so he doesn't know. Um, I'm partial to GTA 1. I'm gonna date myself some more, man. Top down Frogger, most on, but just violent Frogger. Is. I had someone stop by that said they still love 3 or that, something. That was it. Someone stopped by and said they love 3, and I was like, God, what were the graphics on 3? It must have been. They were, it was cool. 3 was cool. If I had to pick a current one, that would be 3 other than ours. San Andreas, because that was, that was... What were the graphics yeah. like on 3? Like, they must seem incredibly antiquated, no? This yeah, point? yeah, but it's kind of cool, though, because you know, it, it's more the, the, you know, you play all the time, so you should know. <laughs> it's, it's more about the movement of the thing that's more antiquated than the, than the graphics. Not as the graphics are still cool. What's your, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite is... And what number is that? Four. 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 All right, my man. Thank All right, you, bro. Next. <laughs> that was a dual question. Okay, sign in. Okay, you, you got to go to the mic. When you three were kids, what was your favorite role model? Okay, one more time. When you guys were kids, what was your favorite role model uh, as an actor or something? Well, well, well mine, you know, it, I can't say actors. Um, mine was, you know, I, like I said, I was, I came up in the neighborhood in, in the east side of Watts, Los Angeles, and it was like the older guys in my neighborhood that, like my uncles and father figures, because acting was far from out of my mind. So then, what my role model? Yeah, and and for me, it would be my dad, and my brother. And then, and then also, I'm sorry, Luis Aparicio, who was the shortstop for Chicago White Sox. That was my boyhood idol. Next. I think, like, as a kid, man, I used to, I used to really fuck up to Gene Simmons and kiss. <laughs> I don't know about the role, role model, but I liked, I liked a lot of musicians as a kid. I still love music, but there was, like, Duran Duran and Kiss. <laughs> um, but I don't know if they were role models. I just I looked up to them. I don't know. Yeah. Great choices. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um, who is your least favorite side character, like Debbie Weston or Wade or Ron or something? Lamar. <laughs> Side character? Yeah, like Steve Haynes or something. He was great. The side characters I thought were like we, because they would come in and sort of, you know, we were the mainstay, and then the side characters would come in for sporadically to shoot their material too. 
and they were it was always so fun because we usually had such great people i'm trying to think of oh my god i can't think of somebody who would be my least favorite i really can't uh the only guy that would be my least favorite got cut out of the game so you know your sidekick was wade wasn't it yeah yeah he was great least favorite but least, least favorite. favorite. I don't know. Oh, the least least favorite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't have a least favorite because everybody. What Devin Weston was because I didn't like him because he kept being like scandalous. That's why you seen at the end though he was like looking at him in the trunk of that car and like I chose C. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah. And if I had to pick the least favorite, now I think I'd probably pick Martin Madrazo. Because when we were doing the scene, and this is only because of this, when we were doing the scene where he came and beat me up with the bat, this dude playing Madrazo hit me with the hard part of the bat. I mean, he he didn't hit me with the with the rubbery padded, padded part. part. Yeah, he hit me actually with the hard part of whatever it is we were using for a bat, and he damn near broke my arm. And we were like, I was like down on the floor, man, and there was no acting going on at that time. And then I got up and I said, I told the dress that you better have gotten that take because, man, I'm done for today. His <laughs> arm was like hanging. <laughs> but you kept telling him that he said, man, really hit me. Well, yeah, but he was supposed to hit me with the phone, not with the freaking metal bar going through it. I mean, you know, it was, it was crazy. But anyway, that would be, that would have to be him, I guess. Thank you. But he was a terrific Thank actor, you. fun dude to work with. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't really a GTA question, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but Sean and Ned, I met you both earlier. Well, you two, Stephen. Um, and Ned and Sean, you both kind of, I don't know, you seem to be how I expected you to be. Um, but you, Stephen, seem a lot quieter than the characters you seem to take on, like Trevor and even the milkman in Westworld. What draws you to those oh, types? Man, I like the milk. <laughs> <laughs> what, what draws you to those kinds of characters? Because they seem quite far from who you really are. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it is acting, so you, you know, you don't necessarily do roles that uh, reflect who you are. You just you, you want to do things that are challenging and different, and be it someone, you know, I, I mean, I'm gregarious too, you have a temper too, but. I don't know, you never look at what is, you know, you, you, you act and you want to do as many different things as possible and you want to, you know, play someone funny or someone creepy or someone, you know, horrible. That's sort of the, the whole idea. Yeah, kind of the whole trick is to separate the this from the that, I think, you know, he does a great job of that, but I wonder if this is the acting and that's... Well, yeah, you have to catch me on certain days, like, I can be a great asshole at times. Like I think I was portraying an asshole pretty good with the, the first question. Yeah. I think yeah. I did a good job. Yeah. That was a bit of an asshole. So, yeah. you know, you just, uh, you just try to do as many different things as possible. And as an actor, you're always looking to especially keep people guessing. It's a tough part nowadays with social media and the world we live in is that you, you, it's part of the business, but the idea of an actor is to not be known. Right? The more you know, you think you know about someone, then it, you're not going to have that suspension of disbelief watching them. Yeah. So yes, this is an act too, like that said. It's all act. Alright, my question is for the three of you. Um, is there anything specific in the game, like anything specific that made its way into the game that was your own input that you thought of? And Everything I did. <laughs> Because you gotta, I don't know if you, I can't say you gotta remember, but you gotta know this, that these are British writers. Scottish. Scottish, British writers, and it's hard to just write for my role as being a black guy from the neighborhood. So they, they did real good with it. They wrote and they tried, but I have to take a lot of things and say it how it really supposed to happen and how I feel that it really happens coming from Franklin's as aspect in the, in the game, you know, he's a neighborhood guy, and I couldn't say like proper stuff that they were saying. You know, they say rubbish. I never knew what rubbish mean. Like my first time hearing mom, I, I say mama. So, what's your favorite line? My favorite line? Ooh, wow. I don't have a favorite line because all I said was through the whole game was what. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And the reason I was saying what a lot, a lot of people don't know the secret because I was forgetting my line, so I go, what? And then it'll come to me and then I can remember what I had to say. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta think too, like, like we started with a brilliant script script. I mean the script was also about thirty five hundred pages. I mean, it, it was massive. And you know when you've got a great script to work with, it kind of leads you to where you want to go improvisationally. Because you can stay within, if this is, you know, where you're starting and that's where you want to get to, you know, you can do some stuff in between here as long as it gets to here. And they were very free with us in that regard, you know, to let us bring our own selves to it and our own kind of kind of deal to it, you know, because he came from the hood, I'm from, I'm from kind of a pretty tough town, you know, and I'm from the street a little bit too, and I wanted to bring that to him. And our take on things might be different than what the writer's takes were, but you make them the same, and then they go, oh, that's great. And that's what, that's what art is, is when you take this idea and this idea, and they come together, and they become art. And that's kind of what that is. I hope it's art anyway. I, I fancy myself an artist. If I am. Some would say I'm a artist. What about you? She gone. She gone? Okay, next. Oh, it's the Husky Man. What's yeah, that, dude? I arrived. <laughs> um, all my questions were taken, but uh, what was your favorite scene in the game that you filmed or played in? Well, we already said the big one, so do we need to come up with a different one? Yes. I will. I'll come up with a different one. Um, I, because it's different every time somebody asks us that question, because I think of one. And uh, my favorite scene was in, in two of them. The one where Trevor shows up. You only get one, man. Yeah, but anyway, they, they, they play into each other. The one where Trevor shows up, and I find I find the, the weed in the fridge with Jimmy, and I got that, and then we're, I, I, I'm busting his ass about that, and all of a sudden, Fabian's there about the yoga thing, and then Trevor goes in and says, does somebody say yoga? And then it's Trevor and me, and it's like, oh, man, all of a sudden it turns on a dime. You know, there's that, and then the graveyard scene between you and me and the one with you out on the thing where I don't fess up to be a fed. I got three of them, all right? You can sue me. I got no How about you, Sean? Steven? Oh, I, I think my favorite, well, it is, it's very tough, but you, you come up with different ideas, but certainly the one of my favorite, because it was fun, I mean, this taking this aside, like us working together in our scenes, um, was one that never made the, the video game. Uh, I got to shoot for, I don't know, it was like a good week of Trevor was uh, trying to, he was he was pretending to be gay to oh, get yeah. some, yeah, so to buy some house or something. And it was a lot of fun. And we did this whole <laughs> week. And, it, and of course, like Trevor, he pushed it to the, the nth degree. Oh, that was the whole... <laughs> That makes this whole laugh. <laughs> this guy growing up in Calgary, I won't, say, I won't say his name, he was a photographer, and he had this laugh. <laughs> and he would always stick his ass out and just do this whole <laughs> <laughs> So it was, it, was, it was fun, but it never made the video. Yeah, it was really a shame, because it was freaking funny, man. Oh, and I, like, because I, I milked a, a horse. Oh, 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 you know what? Oh, oh, because oh, they had a farm, and I was trying to buy the house, and so I was doing this whole thing of, like, oh, I know what I can do. You guys know Sharmuda, you've seen it. Thank you. We are on very limited time, and we have ten minutes left with our... You've already okay, asked, so, so you go. Asked a question, if you've asked, next. Is it on? Get out? Here we go. Hey y'all, so I guess my question is for Sean. I was wondering, so since you grew up in LA and Rockstar like emulated Los Angeles for a lot of Los Santos, I was wondering like, was there any like kind of iconic places that you recognize that uh, they eventually put into the game? The whole map of Los <laughs> Santos, because they came and they put everything in there, Compton, Watts, Hollywood. So when you drive in the cars, you're very familiar where you're going. You know, I know every place and street and building that was in the game. Because we, we had a big rock star party at the, 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 the Chateau Marmont, and, and we drove the car right there, you know, in front of it, and we stood out there while they drove it up there. So yeah, it's, and then the it's premiere, very familiar to me. The premiere is at the, you know, yeah. it's at what is actually essentially the Man Chinese Theater. Chinese theater. But I lived in LA for 18 years, and what I like to do in the game is I'll, I'll drive around and try to find my houses where I lived in LA. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah. But. Anyways, All right, right. 
Hello, I arrived late to this panel, but I don't know if this question was asked before, but if there was any outtake you could implement to the game, what would it be? <laughs> well, we had a good outtake, I think I asked for. We were, you remember the scene where we had to lay down in the train? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was. Well, Steven kept farting and farting <laughs> in my face. If you remember, we were laying down with the money and his ass was just always right there. And he just kept cutting them and cutting them. And we had hippie lunch that day. Steven had a lot of quinoa and yeah. beans and protein. And <laughs> he's a methane actor. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Hi. What kind of? What up? Um, do you guys have plans for be together in the future? Sorry, I kind of messed that up. Do you guys plan on doing other stuff together? Yeah, we're going to be in uh, GTA 18. 15. 15. 15. 15. Geriatrics. We're all going to be geriatrics in the GTA 18. Geriatrics. About shitting our auto. pants and being wheeled around. But to answer your question, bro, I need that wheelchair out. Yeah. To answer your question, bro, man, we, we hope so, bro. We don't know yet, you know. Right now, we just enjoying the moment with us together doing the cons right now, so. It'll be fun. That's for sure. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys would have any fun if we did another thing, but, you know. Next. We would. Thanks. So my question was, how did you guys get yourself mentally ready for the roles? It wasn't like that, you know, it just took time to get to know each other, you know. When I first came on to the set, it was just me and Lamar at first, and I didn't even know that they were in the game. And they didn't know that we were in the game. So when we finally started working together, we had to, you know, get to know each other first, and that kind of went pretty quick, you know, with a lot of anger towards each other at first, you know. Getting to learn them, you know, but it worked out. It it wasn't hard. It's it was like cool. Family. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got I got into it. I used what I used mostly get ready for it was a, I did a picture exercise and found some old Chicago gangster that I don't know who it was or if he was famous or not. And I had that picture and I made myself that guy. I dressed like it and I, I found all the stuff and I just brought them to life and did the thing I did at home and you know that kind of got me to where I felt like I needed to be. And I just carried that on and found the rest of it as we went along. I listened to a, a Dallas Green every day, literally that was every, every morning. Who's City in Color? But, uh, he's very just, good manager. For those of you who haven't heard of him, he's, Dallas Green was the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies for a while. He's really good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's get to if you guys have, you've asked a question before. You've yeah, asked a question. Here, uh, let's go to the one that has right. it. Right. Yeah. Just to, you know, there we go. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Hey, bro, what's up? Good, good. Quick question for Sean. In San Andreas, your IMDb states that you're uncredited, yeah. right? Because you did recordings when CJ, like the CJ was the president. Yeah, yeah. What I'm wondering is, are your lines audible through gameplay, or does it require finding the, uh, the lost audio files in the game? Well, what they did was, with San Andreas, I played multiple game voices. So I was changing my voice. I was just like the background dude, what up, Cubs? What up, homie? Get the fuck off my block. So it was just a lot of that. It wasn't like a main kind of character, but you know, speaking on that, I'm quite sure everybody here did the research and know that you know the real CJ Melee is like my cousin. So you know, it was like a family thing, man. To be me, um, uh, Melee, which plays CJ, and Lamar, which is Slink Johnson, we all like related. You know, that's that's weird that that happened that way, but it happened. So, Wait, what were some of the lines you did? A bunch of gangbanging shit. You couldn't do it. <laughs> no, but that was you, because that was my favorite fucking character in that game. What? Yeah. Sean meet Ned. Shit. Ned meet I'm Sean. Ned. <laughs> shit. I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> now, was, it, was, it, was it in the booth, or was that called in by the No, I was in the booth. Was in the booth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, that caught me off guard when I did GTA 5. Because it was just in the booth, and I just read a paper and just said, Motherfucker, 
DJ Pooh that got you in on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy, man. DJ Pooh is responsible for a lot of things I do in the entertainment as far as music, whatever little movies I was in, and GTA 5 and San Andreas. His real name is Sir Plop a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, talking about in the booth, you know, that's something that some people don't realize is that, you know, because like, he did in the booth on, on free, but, you know, when you get out on stage, a lot of our, in fact, I would say the majority of our stuff in five was actually recorded live on stage, just like seeing in mocap suits, you know, stuff. So we did like, what, 100 hours in the booth, but just all, all the scene work and everything, that was all live, you know, and everything, so it was really cool. So it's a big difference from what they did before. I think that was probably what helped a lot for, you know, making the game what it was too, I believe. Well, okay. thank you, yeah. gentlemen, so much for awesome. being here today. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. 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 Thank you for being here